Good morning and welcome to today's edition of Tech for Experts and Authors. My name is Chet Davis, otherwise known as your technology tutor. Join me each weekday morning at 6.45 a.m. Pacific, 9.45 Eastern, as we um, share ideas, thoughts, tips, um, tackle questions you have with personal technologies, whether it's for work or play, largely focused on those who are experts and authors, speakers, presenters, etc. Today, I want to follow up um, kind of on part two from yesterday morning. Yesterday, we talked about the dangers, the insecurities of using public Wi-Fi or free public Wi-Fi when you're out and about using your technology, whether it's your laptop computer at the uh, local coffee house, or maybe it's your laptop computer, your iPad, your smartphone, uh, maybe you're traveling nationally, domestically, internationally, and uh, how hackers can access information when you're using that service. So again, just a quick review. Part of the danger is when we're using uh, unsecured Wi-Fi, there are two options. One, um, a cyber thief could be sitting in that same cafe and could have compromised the Wi-Fi access point so that you think you're sending stuff privately to your bank or to a work colleague, to even back home, photos back home. And what's happening is it's, it's going through that other person's technology, essentially, like going through them as a bridge before it gets to the internet. The danger there is they could also be intercepting as you're typing in your uh, passcodes, your login credentials for banking information, uh, for your social media accounts, all that, and they could access them not only at that time, but at a later date when you're not even around. Um, so using secured Wi-Fi is ideal where you actually have to enter uh, a passcode to get in rather than just joining a free Wi-Fi. It's an extra step, but if you want to be safe and secure, that's the best thing. Um, the, the, the optimum thing is using a VPN or a virtual private network. Now, a VPN, we like lots of TLAs in technology, right? Three, three letter acronyms, TLAs. Um, a virtual private network is something that used to be only available to big companies with, with big budgets. And it used to be that they would have a hardwired line that went from the um, local internet service provider to their remote office. And oftentimes that was called an ISDN line and they'd pay hundreds of dollars a month or even thousands of dollars a month to have this hardwire connect, a direct line from the internet service provider out to their office who would basically, it's, it's like connecting a long cable or cord between their remote office and their home office and the computer. So all that data would stay private and secure, which, you know, for banking, for, for, for the stock market, for financial, um, uh, and let alone government enterprise, that's something that was put into place. As the internet's become more robust and much more um, uh, available to all of us, and even high-speed internet to lots of folks in many areas, there uh, is now the capability to do this electronically. And that's what we call a VPN or virtual private network. So when we say virtual private network, it's different than a dedicated private network. In other words, there's no hard wire that goes from the internet to my home office. Instead, it's virtual. And what there is, is there's a portal. It's essentially uh, a software tool that I download, an app or application, and uh, it's part of a paid service. You can do free, but we're going to talk in a minute about why I don't recommend that. But this service essentially is on your computer or on your mobile device. You log in with your username and password and anything that's happening. Well, let me show you. Here's a diagram. So you see on the left is you on your mobile device or on your desktop or laptop computer. Instead of connecting directly to the internet, what's happening is you're connecting through the portal on your device into what they call a VPN tunnel. And that tunnel, think of the, the, the analogy of a tunnel is a good one because that tunnel protects your information from anybody else that's out there on the internet, either in that internet cafe, in that, you know, cafe sitting on the banks of the River Seine, or, um, in the airport and or anybody out there online who might intercept that network traffic and it goes to the VPN server to their server and it's encrypted this during the the time it's traveling in other words it's actually passing through this tunnel and even if somebody were to intercept it they they arrange what they call the packets of information the bits of information is encrypted in such a way so even if somebody intercepted it 
it would be almost unintelligible. In other words, it's going to be gobbledygook to most folks, and they wouldn't be able to decipher it. It's just not the raw, pure data. So it, it's much more protected. So the benefit to, to you and I using a VPN is that I can sit in that internet cafe and I'm accessing, even if it's an insecure Wi-Fi connection, I'm going through the portal and it's encrypting the data before it leaves my computer, before it even gets to the internet. And then it's traveling to that server and through that server it's connecting out to the internet through their secure Wi-Fi connection. Now. The, the biggest benefit, especially during our conversation today as it relates to this topic, is it allows you to use your technology on the road, domestically, internationally, what have you, in such a way that it is protected. It's encrypted. Very few people can access it. And again, even if they could access it, they're it, uh, highly unlikely they're going to be able to decrypt it to make sense out of it. So your financial information, the things you're emailing, photos you're sending, etc. So again, the biggest benefit is it avoids hackers. Um, uh, if you're in another country where you may suspect, you know, you're, it, it's some kind of a, a very important deal for your company and you don't want the information to be shared across other um, uh, networks that might fall into the wrong hands, it's another way of doing it. Folks use VPN who are in uh, government services as well. Um, some people use it to access services that are available internationally. For example, you may know uh, that if you're in the UK, for example, and there's a video your friend's talking about on Facebook, and your friend lives in the US, and they're talking about this cool video, uh, they, go to fa they go to YouTube and try to watch that video. Well, that, you that YouTube video is restricted to only audiences in the US. Well, using a VPN, you can access a server that's in the US, and essentially it's showing you as a US computer user that you can access those services and benefits there. So that, that's a whole other topic for another time because some companies like Netflix restrict that because they have videos and programs that are only available in certain countries and they've cut down on some VPN access. But uh, let me pull the reins back before I get too deep on all this other stuff and say, again, a VPN is a virtual private network, a service, a paid service that allows you to access the internet with that's very highly secure. It is also available, um, many of these services have an app or an application you can download on your mobile device, on your phone or your iPad that allows you to um, access the internet remotely on those devices, also being highly secure. So um, you'll find that the range uh, in, in price goes from about eight to $15 per month. Uh, I've been using one called um, IP Vanish, IP Vanish. Um, and uh, I'm in the process of testing a number of these. Strong recommendations though, you will find some that are free. Uh, recommendation is, or the caution is, don't use them because um, you don't get something for nothing. You know, there's no such thing as a free lunch in the physical universe. So um, there's a trade-off and they're likely installing mm, uh, possibly some what we call bloatware. Uh, could be some uh, information that puts adverts on and it may not be malware. It may not hurt your computer, but it might slow it down. Which reminds me of one last thing to share with VPNs. VPNs, for two reasons, oftentimes will cause slower performance when you're using the internet because number one it's encrypting your data it's encrypting your information before sending it out so it takes a few moments to do that okay i don't see that as a huge downside the other thing is because it's traveling through that vpn tunnel to the company's server that is oftentimes far away it may also be taking a little bit longer than normal, both to upload and to download. So it's something to be aware of, but it does allow you highly secure uh, information, uh, the opportunity to access the internet, to use the internet in a very secure fashion. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope this was useful. Go ahead and like this page if you haven't already. Uh, please invite your friends and colleagues to join me here on Facebook. Uh, best thing to do again is to like the page, even like this episode, share this episode. Uh, if you found this of value, I would really appreciate you uh, making a comment in the uh, box below because that will also kind of make it more sticky and allow other folks, your friends and colleagues, your contacts on Facebook to be able to find me and hopefully benefit from this information as well. Also in the comment box, you're welcome to uh, suggest 
to ask questions, to suggest technologies you'd like me to touch base on in future episodes of Tech for Experts and Authors. Chet Davis, your technology tutor, signing off. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye for now.